Hello, I am Elizabeth Fryer, and today we'll be talking about conflict management and controversy with civility. Today, we will be learning how to manage relationships amid different, differing viewpoints. So this is the outline of this presentation. We will start with a general overview, conflict resolution, controversy with civility, and a dialogue as conflict management. So, the impact of quality education, the mission of Texas Tech University as a public research university, Texas Tech advances knowledge through innovative and creative teaching, research, and scholarship. The university is dedicated to student success by preparing learners to be ethical leaders for a diverse and global, globally competitive workforce. The university is committed to enhancing the culture and economic development of the state, nation, and world. So, Raider Education Cultural Intelligence Model. Raider Education prepares student leaders to be authentic, aware, informed, inclusive, collaborative, and courageous. So, some of the topics that Raider Education covers is being authentic in our intro to culture intelligence model, being aware of your identity and biases, informed on creating individual and group and organizational culture, being inclusive as a leader and responding to microaggressions, being collaborative. Today, that's what we'll be discussing as we are collaborating with controversy, with civility and intergroup dialogue, also being courageous, being an ally, leadership for social change, and anti-racism training. Contact Red Raider for any additional information about Raider education workshops for your student organizations, department, or self. So first we have a quote from Sandra Day O'Connor. Unfortunately, civility is hard to codify or legislate, but you know it when you see it. It's possible to disagree without being disagreeable. So take some time to think about what does it mean to disagree without being disagreeable. So how can conflict on campus be positive when managed success successfully? So here are four ways that conflict can be positive. Conflict engages diverse ideas, conflict breeds creativity, opens new dialogue, and it can result in stronger relationships. So there are different types of conflict on campus that you all may face. You have personality conflicts, role conflicts, and idea conflicts. So we're going to talk about each one. Personality conflict. Personality conflict is conflict that arises from a difference in opinion about how we exist in community, often based on individual past experience. So an example could be views on personal space, appropriate understanding of social norms. So some people like to stand six feet away and some people don't think it's a good idea to stand six feet away in a line. That could be a personality conflict. So a role conflict is conflict arising from a difference in opinion about the responsibility of an individual or group toward another individual or group. An example of this is roommate responsibility or membership requirements in a student organization. Your roommate may think that you guys should wash dishes every other day and one roommate may say no once a week. That is a role conflict. So conflict of ideas, conflict arising from a difference of opinion about deeply held values and beliefs. Examples of this are political beliefs, religious beliefs, cultural differences. So an example of this could be if you are arguing about whether or not we should raise taxes or not. That is a political belief sometimes and that could cause conflict. So my question to you all is where have you encountered each 
type of conflict on campus. So take a minute to think about where this conflict started if you have seen it before. Okay, so what can you do when you encounter a conflict? Some people fight for your opinions. That means, you know, you're going to debate it to the topic is dead. Some people can avoid conflict. And some people can engage in conflict management. So what are the possible outcomes through conflict management? You can have win-lose scenarios, lose-lose scenarios, or win-win. This is a win-lose outcome. The outcomes to conflict where one party dominates the conflict to advance their position. Some of the results is one party receives the intended out outcome. Relationships are strained. Abend individuals often feel marginalized. And future interaction may become awkward or less positive after no conflict resolution. So a lose-lose outcome is outcomes of conflict where both parties fight for their position and conflict results in personal attacks or insults. Neither party wins the argument, um, the relationships are severely damaged, and there's little likelihood of future collaboration and resolution. A win-win outcome. And it's an outcome of conflict where both parties feel that they have been heard and both parties agree on a resolution or a solution they agree on and the root problem is, and they agree what the root problem is and agree to collaborate on the new solution. The results in this is you maintain a relationship that carries an equal weight of winning and the integrity of each individual is maintained. So, Let's have another moment to think on this question. When was a time you have experienced each of the three conflict outcomes? Some may say that they have experience these outcomes in roommate fights, sorority and member fights, fraternity member fights, or sibling fights, or conflicts, I guess, not fights. So how can you engage in creative conflict management? So these are some of the strategies for those win-win outcomes. First, you need to identify the conflict, prioritize the relationships, seek agreement on the root causes of the conflict, and engage in creative solutions that prioritize collaboration over compromise. So I want you guys to take some time to think about prioritizing collaboration over compromise. So when ideological, ideological differences just seem to be too big, what is controversy with civility? So controversy with civility is when we recognize that differences in viewpoints are inevitable and valuable. Such differences must be aired openly and with respect and courtesy. Solutions are often found through dialogue to understand the source of the disagreement and work collaborative toward common solutions. So there are four conversation styles, the diatribe, discourse, debate, and dialogue. So discourse is one way and cooperative, the purpose is to deliver information. Dialogue, a two-way and cooperative, the exchange of information and building relationships. Diatribe one way and competitive to express emotions, browbeat or inspire. Debate 
a two-way competitive to win or commit. So one way means one person having all of the conversation. It's a one-way street where two-way there is back and forth. Cooperative obviously would be closer to the discourse and dialogue, whereas competitive would be diatribe and debate. So diatribe, an example, is political speech. It is one way and competitive, typically for convincing through emotion and browbeating. And one individual or group holds all the power and convinces other that others that their ideology through any means. Discourse, however, is a conversation model that is one way and cooperative, typically used for sharing information. One group or individual holds all the power but engages with others and accepts questions to answers. An example of this is a college lecture or a group lecture. Debate. This is a conversation battle that is a two-way and competitive, typically utilizing specific rules for engagement used to convince others or to win your viewpoint. Both party parties hold power, but use their power to proliferate their ideology and discredit the other side and win the argument. Examples of this are legislators. Dialogue. An example of this is community conversations, conversation model that is two-way and cooperative, typically utilizing specific rules and engagement and used to share information and build relationships. In this dialogue communication style, both parties hold power and use it to make sure all parties feel involved and heard. The key to dialogue is also making sure everyone is engaging in respectful conversation. So when engaging in dialogue, these are five things you can consider. There should be ground rules, a neutral space, identify all individuals from both groups to manage their own members and maintain the rules. Listen first, listen a lot. Understand that this is a process. One conversation may not be enough. So managing conflict. How can you do that? Once again, identify the conflict. Identify the group or individual goals and values. Establish rules for engaging in conflict that prioritizes relationships and individual integrity. Commit to controversy with civility and seeking a win-win. Use dialogue to identify sources of disagreement. Use dialogue to identify collaborative strategies for reaching common solutions. So, for you all to be ethical and diverse leaders, here are just a few things that you need to make sure that you are doing. Ask questions, listen, Act ethically, empower others, reflect on your actions, advocate for others, commit to future learning. And that is all. So I, I hope you all take this with you and practice together. Thanks.